Grab your 10-foot poles, Wargamers, because today we're taking miniature wargaming into the dungeon with everybody's favorite Song of Golden Darkness. Dungeon rules for Song of Blades and Heroes. Before we send these heroes down into the dungeon, we're going to call it Castle Meat Grinder, an old favorite of mine. We should probably introduce you. We're going to start off with the four classic Hero Quest Warhammer Quest figures. We are using Song of Blades and Heroes, so we've got ourselves a Dwarven Elite Warrior. We've got ourselves an Elf Hero. Don't let the figure fool you. Actually, Taylor, let's swap him out. I should have picked an Elf with... There we go. This should have picked an Elf with a bow. I've got a Barbarian... He is both tough and savage, and of course, a magic user. You can tell because he's got the pointy hat. We're also going to add into the mix, the recommendation is that you have 500 points worth of dudes, and I've only got about 350 here, so we're going to throw in an assassin. Whenever he wins a combat, it's a kill. And then I hired three elite archers. They can shoot long, they have unerring aim, so they're... Um, Penalties for shooting at long range are halved. Uh, 15 millimeter figures, uh, variety manufacturers, I want to say. I want to say a couple of these guys are available from Ral Partha or Iron Wind Miniatures. A couple of these guys. This guy comes in a pack. This guy comes in a pack. I want to say these three fellas are splintered light adventurers, but they might have been, I tend to lose track. They might have been from... Alternative armies, they have a fantastic range of 15mm adventurers as well. So shop around, it's half the fun of this hobby. Uh, let's pan out, I'm going to show you the field of battle, well, the, the dungeons of Castle Meat Grinder. It occurs to me that this is going to be a lot more fun if we give a little bit more personality to our heroes. So I went through my list of commenters, most recent ones, and kind of... Gave them all names inspired by you guys watching the channel. And here what we have is the wizard, the great Corletto, the barbarian Breeze Lee. We've got a dwarf elite named Zai, an elf hero named Dar Tamart, and of course an assassin named John of the Scar. These three guys, I just pulled the first names because they're, let's face it, they're kind of mooks. They're, they're henches. So uh, Jerry, Steve, and Carl, you're going to be henching for... A, the squad today. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and stop bumping my camera so we can see the full playing field. And before I do that, I just want to show you, I've got a, a stack of room cards here and I've got an unlabeled stack of monster cards. That's how we're going to build our dungeon. Before we get too deep into this, I should probably go over the rules in a little more detail, but honestly, frankly, I'm not going to do that. I just want to play the game. You guys are pretty smart fellas. You wouldn't be here if you weren't, so why don't we just play? You'll figure it out as we go along. I've now shuffled the room deck, and then here is the monster deck. I'm going to shuffle these two. Um, i got to be honest with you. I prepared these rooms. You can see this is an example of what a room looks like. This is the start of the dungeon. And aside from that, I'm just randomizing the monsters in the rooms. And uh, I'm not sure how well this is going to work. Now that I look at this, looks like my corridors are a little bit too narrow. But hey, we're here. We're a couple minutes in. Let's give it a shot. I will say this. Song of Golden Darkness recommends that you start with 500 points worth of heroes and that your dungeon dwellers should be twice the value of those heroes. I didn't do that. I just went through my collection and made a card for every miniature in my collection. And what we're going to do is send these guys in, see how many monsters they can wipe out before they finally get overwhelmed. Um, it also recommends that you use 2 to 2 by or 3 by 3 foot. Yeah, that's fine. And there's all kinds of rules for treasure and stuff. Uh, if we do, you know, they've got a random monster table, but like I said, we're using the deck. Uh, I have a couple of bigger rooms that might get called out. If we if they're drawn here, that's what the features are for. And again, I've randomized those. They'll come up, and we'll drop one of those into the large rooms. In the meantime, just to warn you, uh, room contents, we're going to roll on this every time we flip over a card to find out whether it's empty, cluttered, uh, scenic item, monster room, minor treasure, or main treasure room. That's the other way to go about doing this. So, uh, one through six. More stuff, the higher the roll. 
And uh, the one thing that I also need to talk about is how movement works. And it really is just as simple as this. We're going to grab a room card. We're going to flip it over. Now, one little wrinkle that I have is that I've got three different possibilities here. And we're going to roll a D6. And we're going to find out which one it is that aligns. So on a 5 to 6, it turns out this dungeon is a dead end. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm praying for you. You still here? Okay, then let's do this. We're going to go ahead and, uh, since there's only one way to align this, we're going to line that up just like that. Dealer's choice. If you have a situation where you can not play a game or realign it, we're going to do the realignment, and then we're going to roll on our table for contents. That is an empty room, so everybody moves up to the edge, and we're going to keep them in that marching order, and then we're going to draw another room. So on a five or six, we have a large room, and on a one to four, we have a dead end. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, I'm praying for you. All right, yeah, sure. We kind of have the same problem here. This is the sort of thing I was worried about. This is why you need to play test uh, random dungeons. This is why maybe rolling on tables is a little bit better. But we're here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a shot and see what we get. On a three, our room is Defender may place a scenic item, but it's not a monster room. It's not a main treasure room. And it's not a minor treasure room. So, you know, basically we just had a dead end dungeon. Big fun, big fun. We're doing great, aren't we? Uh, let's send them through another dungeon and see what happens. So our boys go out and they find another entrance to the dungeons beneath Castle Meat Grinder. And this time, here we go, we get a big room too for them to fight in. Big room two looks a little something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see that a little bit better. Remember when I warned you about features? I've got three of them here, and we're going to randomize. One, two, three, four, five, six. On a six, we're going to use this feature, and we're just going to drop it right in the center. Nah, it's a little different. So what we have here is a dais, and we're going to slide that over here. So any figures that are standing on this first step, fighting somebody that's on a lower step down here, they're at a plus one. Likewise, with this high step, because this is a final room, we're going to treat that result as the main treasure room. There's only one main treasure room. Roll a die. On a one to three, it contains a horde. On a four to five, it remains a six. Uh, it contains a chest. So we have a horde. And I just happen to have figures for that. Here's the horde that we're going to tuck into the corner of the room. It's going to be going to make this whole area behind the line difficult going. So this corner over here, everything over here is going to be difficult going. All right, so let's go ahead and cut this attack one more time, a couple of times so you know that I'm not trying to jive you. And we're going to turn over and find out what kind of monsters are in there. The first thing we have is a cockatrice, which has a uh, is worth 75 points. We've got imps that are worth 96 points and we've got we're going to make this a fair fight and we've got uh shroomen which are worth 234 so add all those up and you get a grand total of call it three four we need one more so kind of a coalition of the aggrieved here we're also going to throw in a giant snake and i think that's probably a decent fight uh, I did have, this would have been very apropos, dragon, and then roll a 1 to 3, roll a d6 to find out if it's just a giant lizard or a big old dragon. Uh, I think that's what we got. Yeah, so I uh, went ahead and, you know, found ways to randomize even my random critters, right? A war band, whether it's warriors, leaders, or shaman. And here we have death cultists, which are, you know, any four of them. You're going to have fanatics, warriors, mages, and assassins. But we're not too worried about that. Let me pull out the figures, and we'll do a little battle here in the deep dark. So, after a bit of thought, um, it doesn't look like that particularly uh, exciting kind of battle. But hey, 
the dice giveth, the dice taketh, taketh away, and so too do the cards. Uh, what I've done is to kind of create a mini story out of this. The leader of the Shroomen, that's this big guy over here, is, look, look how angry he is that they would be invading his territory. He's got a couple of fanatics. Uh, these are essentially, if you're familiar with the game, these guys are mutants. And then we've got a couple little fanatics here uh, with the orange and the purple cap. Look at that. These guys, I think, are from alternative armies. I don't know. They're so chaos, they don't even want to focus. Uh, we got a snake over here in the corner. Uh, the the big boy here has summoned four imps. And I these aren't great. These are part of the bo Reaper Bones thing. Um, they're very, very wiggly. They don't have a lot of heft to them. They're not great sculpts, but... Until I find some new way to do imps. And, uh, you know, hubba hubba. We're going to stick with these guys here. They all have the same stats. They're not particularly powerful, but they do fly. And they are kind of a pain in the neck. So they're kind of more harassers. He has summoned them after hearing these fellas bumble around. So, and then we have, uh, this is a cockatrice. It's actually part of a 28 millimeter Reaper Bones. I think it's supposed to be a... What do you call it? What do you call the wizard companions? It's supposed to be a wizard companion, but I thought, eh, you know, we need a Quetzalcoatl, and it's a flying, turn you into stone kind of thing. Uh, animal big poison, that's the giant snake. Uh, the cockatrice is an assassin that flies, and we're ready to go. We're going to start with initiative, and we'll use the green die for Team Good and the red die for Team Evil. Looks like Team Evil gets the jump. And Team Evil's going to uh, play it smart. It's going to start with uh, red, green, white. We're going to activate each one of these for one action. They all have uh, four to go. Red, green, white. So red and green get to go. I'm sorry, red and white get to go. And this bottom guy does not. So two of these guys are going to go ahead and just zip on over out of the way. We're going to bring the snake up as some kind of cannon fodder. That giant snake has a 3 plus to activate. And we'll bring the cockatrice up next. 3 plus. Uh, reduced to, oh, it's flying, so he can zip on out here. And then we have uh, 1, 2, 3, well, let's, hmm... The, these guys all activate on threes. So I think we can get one at least. We're going to try to bring, we're going to bring him down. Now the mutants are pretty much the same as, let me think about this. The fanatics are fearless and steadfast. So that's a good thing to be. We're going to roll once for each of those guys Red and green, just like a stoplight. Uh, they both activate on a 3+. plus With one action, they're both going to head on out to take charge of the situation. Likewise, we get a 3+. plus With each of these guys, we'll do this guy first. He gets one action. And remember, on two failures, your opponent gets to go. And then he's only needs one activation, which he gets. He's going to slide around here. And that leaves the last one, who is Mr. Chaos Mage. Now, he is a mutant and a sorcerer. And if you don't have Song of Golden Darkness, that means if we roll two or more successes, which we did... Roll a d6, and on a... Oh, he's got... So he's... Sorry, let me back up a step. I should declare. Um, he's firing off a spell. He is classed as a magic user. Uh, so he um, needs... Oh, he needs all three successes to hit this guy. He can only fire it off at two successes, which means... Well, let's take a look-see. One, two. So he can hit with two successes. The issue here is that he needs to roll a d6, and on a 6, he mutates. And I got a little table here in the book, but he didn't, so all that happens is he casts an attempt at the Barbarian. 
Oh, I got that wrong. I forgot. Um, so he has a power of medium uh, with the power of with two successes. So there's one medium. There's a second medium, and there is the third. So he is in range, but he's going to be fighting at a minus four with that one. Let's just roll the dice and see what happens. Again, green is for the heroes. Uh, so this is interesting. With a power two and a minus four. You subtract 2 from the roll, which makes that a 4. The Barbarian has a combat... I shouldn't say the Barbarian. We gave him a name. Old Breeze Lee over here has a combat of 4, so he gets a 5 to 4, and he shrugs off the effects of the spell. That was their last action. So the first thing we're going to do is try to get Breeze... So the heroes are going to try to get Breeze Lee into combat with this guy right here. We're going to roll for... Looking for two successes. He is successful on... A two plus. So I'm going to go ahead and roll three and see what happens. So he gets three actions. That's awesome. He moves at a medium. That means he can get right up on my boy there. And with two extra successes, he can make a power attack. So he's actually going to be... Oh, Breeze Lee is going to have a combat of five compared to combat of three for the mutant. Adding five, so that's a nine versus a four. That is a gruesome kill. He is also savage, so it's automatically a gruesome kill. He goes down, and he goes down hard. And that means all friendly models within a medium distance have to make a morale test. And that's basically all of these guys. Oh boy. Uh, they all are going to have... Well, let's start with these two imps. They need to roll a 4 plus to succeed. So with two successes, she is going to zip on over here out of the way. This fella... Again, we need 4s with 3 failures... He poofs on out of here, and that brings us around to Mr. Snake, who has an activation of 3+. plus. He gets two successes, so he is going to flee right back to his corner. And then, well, we're just going to move him out of there. Uh, we've got a fanatic. Ooh, wait a second. He is fearless. He, unfortunately, is not. He needs to succeed, hoping for threes. And with three failures, this mutant just ski-daddles. Not a bad attack. He was able to drive off a couple of foes and eliminate three threats from the table. That's how we do. Way to go, Breeze Lee. Uh, next up in the marching order is going to be Mr. Dwarf, and he says, uh, I think with, um, not Mr. Dwarf, his name is not Mr. Dwarf, am I a name or am I a number? You, sir, are Xi, that's XY, and activating on a 3+, plus, we're just going to go ahead and try to get you out of the way this time, oh, two failures, oh my goodness. That is not good for Team Adventurer, because it means we're going to roll red, green, and white for activating the... Oh, no, you know, we're not. We're actually going to try to activate this old boy first. No, oh, and he gets two failures, so it kicks right on back over to these guys. We are going to go ahead and take advantage of that <laughs> by rolling to activate... Mr. Dwarf. A lot of twos on these dice. So, things go back over to Team Goofy. This time, I want to try to activate this imp twice. With two successes, all we're going to be able to do is get right up on Mr. Barbarian. That's fine. Because the next thing we're going to do is bring in Mr. Snake. Oh, are we? No. We're going to go ahead and attack with this fanatic. We only get one success. So we'll bring the fanatic up. Uh, we're going to try to bring these two up. We'll go red and green for activation. They both fail, but it was only one each, so we don't kick over. We're going to activate this cockatrice two times. The big animal with poison. I'm going to go ahead and move Mr. Cockatrice up over here. And then we're going to take uh, a couple of attacks with Mr. Snake. Mr. Snake gets two actions. 
So we'll go ahead and bring him up one. He does not have enough actions to actually attack. So let's bottleneck here. We're going to make you guys defeat Mr. Giant Snake. Oh, Cockatrice is a flying assassin. That's right. Okay. Um, good to know. We're going to make you guys fight the big poisonous animal just to get into the room. And we're going to stand back with these guys one more time. It's not looking good for Team Evil. Where are we at? They didn't get any attacks off, but Mr. Barbarian is in bad in a, in a bad way. So for Team Good, let's go ahead and bring up Mr. Dwarf. We're going to roll all three attacks. We're looking for uh, Zai here, quality three. We get two successes. So that's one to move up. Oh, and he is slow, so he only gets to move this far. Uh, which is enough to get into attack position. It Excuse me, he has a uh, combat of four compared to the snake's combat of three. Again, green for the good guys. That's going to be an eight versus a nine. Any benefits? There's not. Mr. Cockett, ooh, Mr. Big Snake wins. And Big Snake is poisonous. That means he is knocked down. Not only that, we need to roll a d6, and on a 5 or a 6, he takes a wound. He has been poisoned, so his quality is going to go down by 1. So where before he was activating on a 4, he is now activating on... Excuse me, he was activating on a 3. Now he's activating on a 4. If his quality ever reaches 7, he is gonna die. Not good for him. We're going to... <laughs> We're going to bring Mr. Elf Archer up. And he has an activation. Mr. Elf Archer, listen to me. He is an elf hero. Which means he's got a quality of two. So we're going to roll and he gets three successes. So he can move up to here. And take an aim shot there. He is fighting with a combat of three... Versus, because of the aimed shot now, mind you. I think you can, you can do aimed shots with, uh, with, uh, with, with bows, right? Uh, let's see. Power attack, let's see. Ranged combat modifiers. Uh, minus one on the target, so you see. That costs two action. That's fine. So it's going to be a three versus a plus two. So we get a 5, and we get a 7 versus a 5, so nothing happens. Uh, next thing we'll do is bring up... Um, uh, he already went, so it's bar uh, we'll go ahead and try to bring our Assassin up to cover here. And Mr. Assassin activates on 3s. He gets to attack, so he's going to move up for the... I think he can fight over... Looks like we got room for two by two. If one of them is a dwarfy, I think he can fight over his fallen body. So, since he got two actions, he can do one attack. The assassin has a combat of four versus Mr. Deadly Snake with a combat of three. So, a seven versus a nine is Bad News Bears. He also gets bit. Likewise, he falls down, goes boom, and on a five or a six... No, he is not poison. So the only guy left is our barbarian. Well, I tell you what, let's go ahead and roll uh, red, green, white to try and bring these guys up. It might actually matter. They all move up a short, and, or a medium rather, so they're going to come up to here. And we got one more archer back here. That archer does not move. So he's kind of back here at the cave mouth going, I don't know, guys. It doesn't look safe in there. I hear a lot of hissing. And a lot of slithering. Last guy for Team Good is Mr. Barbarian, who is outnumbered. So he is going to be fighting with... He's going to attack... Let's go ahead and attack the Imp. That'll be an easy one. The Imp only has a combat of one. 
But Mr. Barbarian, Breeze Lee, is going to be fighting with a combat of three. So add one to the red, three to that. Ooh. So he manages to turn and scorch Mr. Imp. Nine to three. That is a gruesome kill, although he's savage, so it would be gruesome anyway. He's immune to fear effects, but Mr. Cockatrice is not, and neither is the snake. So Cockatrice is actually going to roll three and disappear. And Mr. Snake, oh boy, I wish we were rolling up. Rolling up characters in the old indy. Mr. Snake needs a three to pass. And he gets one failure. So he's going to go back to Mesa and ask for help. That's it for the heroes. We're going to go back over to the Shroomin. And now... We've got one guy here. Let's go ahead and try to bring that snake back up into position. Succeeding on a three, he gets the one. That's all he needed because it means this fanatic can attack. And it's going to be a fair fight. It's going to be three versus three. And we'll call that four. We'll call that a seven versus a five. That finally puts... Oh. Yeah, now Mr. Barbarian, who's responsible for driving five of the enemies. Out of the room or down is down, but that was Shroomin. So as a mutant, I think that's it. He is a steadfast, fearless mutant. Mutants, I, the mutants are interesting. Um, when you roll for activating those fellas, and they are part of the Song of Gold and Darkness bonus rules. Mutants, whenever they get two or more successes, roll a die on a six. He doesn't do anything and gets a mutation instead. So we got to remember that. Um, he only scored the one success, though. Uh, he moved, he moved. Now we're going to try to bring these imps up. And again, the imps are only successful on a four or higher. So rolling for the one on the miss, for the, the lady. And that fella. <laughs> and then I think we're going to go ahead and uh, abandon the heights because we need to get down into the action. Uh, we have two failures. So we get to do our one move. We're going to move him over to here and call it quits. I want to bring... Mm, 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 some, you know, the problem is all of our hench, all of our meat shields are down. We're we're left with just our distance fighters. So probably the best thing to do is go ahead and take a shot with the elf. Now the elf is 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 a a person. The elf is Dar Tamart. And Dar has activates on a two. I like them odds. We're going to roll for three successes. Hey, we get two. That's enough. We're going to go ahead and drop our measuring stick right here and move him up into the room. So kind of more right there. And he's going to go ahead and take a shot at... Uh, he used one, so he's fighting with a combat of three. We're going to shoot at this guy right here. He's only got a one. If we can if we can roll well here, which we can't. So he that's a clear miss. Four versus six. That's a miss. That's okay. We got a couple of other guys we can do. We're gonna try to bring this archer up. Now that archer only activates on a three plus, but we're gonna try it anyway. With two successes, we can bring him into the room again to kind of meet shield for these guys. And with two successes, he's going to take a shot. It's going to be a three versus a one. And again, this imp is is a nimble little minxish. And we just to show you kind of what he looks like there. Look at that ugly ugly bug. And I think we might be able to do one more. Let's give it a shot. Four, three, one. That gives us two actions. I think we can bring him up. Yep, he's going to hop right over the dead bodies and. Probably doesn't have an angle on this imp, so let's go ahead and take a shot at Mr. Giant Snake. So he doesn't poison the rest of our allies. He's going to be shooting with a three. We're going to be defending with a three. So it's an even roll. Even Steven. Six versus four. And um, 
with an odd result, that should just be a pushback. Yeah, it's just a recoil. So he's just going to slip back a little bit. Might as well be a miss. And now we can start trying to recover some of our boys. First things first, the Barbarian, he is going to rise on Barbarian. What are you talking about? Breezley is going to rise. He's got a quality of three. We're taking all three. He's going to rise up for one action, and he's going to do a power attack, which means this Fanatic now, or, yeah, he's, no, he's just a mere, or, he's a mutant, he's a Fanatic. I might have got that backwards, but I'm okay with it. He's attacking a fanatic. No, he's attacking just a mere mutant. So, he's going to be attacking at four. He's going to be attacking at two. And that's two on the red die. Six versus... There we go. So, that's a six versus a ten. And that is another gruesome kill. Man, Savage is just brutal, isn't it? Fanatics, don't test morale. Giant Snakes do. And Giant Snakes who get one failure flee a medium distance. We'll go ahead and put them back here. Uh, we also have to do, uh, I think probably, yep, Mr. Imp over here. Mr. Arrow Dodger is going to activate. We're looking for fours. We got one success, two failures. So he's going to go boop, boop to the corner of the room. And I think that's about it. Uh, the, where is she? Yeah, she needs to roll as well. Again, looking for fours. We got one failure, so she flies over into the horde where she thinks she will be safe. We are not done with these guys yet. We're going to roll twice for Mr. Assassin, and he's going to fail both. He needs a three. So, Team Good's turn is over. This is a great rule set. Look at all the fun we're having with just a simple 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. This is crazy. Uh, but not that crazy. Uh, we're going to roll for... We're going to try twice with her. And she only gets one success to zip up here. We're going to roll twice for her buddy. And with two successes, we can go one, two. And at least make contact with... Breeze Lee, and that's going to allow us to take three actions with this guy. Ooh, that was probably a mistake. I forgot he's a mutant. ruh uh, Because he is a mutant with two successes, there's a chance something crazy happens. On a six... All right, so first of all, he wants to move up, but we need to roll a d6 first. Nope, nothing crazy happens. So he moves up and does a power attack against Breeze. He's going to be attacking at a four because of that extra activation. Breeze is going to be fighting at a... Oh, excuse me, no, he's going to be fighting at a three. He's going to be fighting at a 2 now. That's minus 1 for the power attack. Minus 1 because there's this extra imp on top of him. So 3 versus a 2. And 6 versus a 6 is going to be a tie. And nothing happens. So that leaves the snake is going to try all 3 and get 3 failures. So turn flips back over to the adventure. Once again, we're going to roll two dice. I really want to get these adventures up. Mr. Dwarf first. He scores a two successes. Z no, you know what? He does not. He only gets one. So he stands up. I forgot. He was poisoned. So his activation becomes a four instead of on a three and a four. He is not poisoned. He activates on a three and all he manages to do is get on his feet. Okay. We're gonna, hmm, we're gonna attack the fanatic guy. Uh, he's going to be, well, let's roll and see how many activations he gets first, right? He gets two activations, so he gets his power attack. 
which negates the fact that he's outnumbered. So it's going to be four for Breeze and three for the Fanatic. Breeze gets a seven, Fanatic gets a three. He is gruesomely killed, and now Mr. Imp needs to pass all three of these. He does not. He only gets one success. So he's going to move away twice, but... Mr. Barbarian gets a free hack. This is going to be a four versus a one. And this imp says, bye bye That's it for the Barbarian. We've got a couple of arrow shots here. We're going to try to activate twice. Oh, you know what? We've got a lot of arrow shots. We've got a lot. We're going to activate with, our, with this mook over here firing here first. One success means it's just a regular old bow shot, so he makes his attack. Now, this is at long range, so he's at a minus one. So it's going to be a two versus a one. And with a seven versus this, that's a knockdown. He has got a line of sight over here to the giant snake. He's going to try two activations. He only gets one. Uh, and at medium range, so he doesn't get the bonus for that. So he's going to be fighting in a minus one. That's going to be a two versus a three. Eight versus six. That means he has to recoil. So he's backed up against the wall now. Um, I wonder if when you're shooting uphill, he gets a plus one. I'll have to look at that later. And then Mr. Elf Hero says, yeah, you know, actually, we're going to try to activate this guy first. Just once. He says, yep, I can activate I'm going to go ahead and try to move up here into the action, too. And then Mr. Elf Hero is going to take a shot. He's got three attempts to get... Uh, oh, Corletto here is not very interested, is he? Our Elf Hero, Dar Tamart, activates on a two with two successes. He can take a shot at Monsieur Snake. And Mizuro Snake, because it's an aim shot, is going to be fighting at a 2. That's a 2 versus a 4. What? No, 3. 2 versus a 3 on that green die. So 7 versus 6. Nothing really happens. And I think it's time for Mr. Corletto to say, yeah, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm getting involved. He's going to roll for 3 successes. He's only going to get 2, though, because Corletto has a... Oh, he only gets 1. Oh my gosh, what do you want to do, bud? What do you want to do? You want to move up to here? And that's it? I think that's it. We'll try him out next turn. Uh, oh, you know what I forgot? These guys need to take morale tests because they're down to less than half the original numbers. So rolling for him, he gets one failure. Rolling for him, he gets only one success. Two failures. Now here's well, you know, here's the problem with these dungeon crawls, and one of the things I don't fully understand is what happens here. You lost two. Do they automatically surrender? They've got no route of retreat, which might be a problem with the dungeon design. I might need to put a lot more exits into these rooms, uh, but it might also be okay. Just that you know, whenever your morale fails and you got nowhere to run to, you're done. Uh, there's a bunch of treasure rules. Uh, this was a fun little fight, just kind of a silly, weird mishmash, kind of a random, chaotic dungeon. And it would have been nicer to fight some smaller fights first, maybe soften these guys up a little more. But, you know, we, th we, we threw some guys down. We rolled some dice. We moved our mice. It was nice. What else do you want? tell you what I want. I want another chance at this. I want to try to bring out my, uh, you know, you know, it's interesting. The last dungeon crawl I did was a total party wipe. They did terrible and they fought less points, but because it was undead, they got the wrong mix. They did horrible. These guys got the jump. They had a really powerful, man, that savage is just, one might almost say it's savage in the modern vernacular makes a big difference and the imps you know they were kind of harassers and harriers I, I gotta wonder if I didn't bring up my heavy hitters a little quicker instead of focusing on trying to get the distraction down if that would have made a difference but you know I don't know you know hard to say with these kind of things and here's one last parting shot 
up close and good looking team good tune in a couple of days we'll have another video and until then i will be praying for you